how the Taliban are cracking on in Afghanistan, shall we? Just another day in Kabul with some brilliant, you know, brilliant, brilliant, intelligent people. Have a look at this one. Just <laughs> casual. <laughs> the Taliban, ladies and gentlemen, if it was not bad enough, they have now banned the heads of female mannequins in shops. Because, yeah, even dolls are too much for these men. Yeah. Literally. It would be better for them if, like, we just didn't exist. Just get rid of us all. What about this, though? I mean, you've covered the face, but their chests are like, you know, you can still kind of make out of what, what is the shape of their breasts. Wouldn't that make yeah. sense? Yeah, and they're like, they're like perky breasts that they can still see. Wouldn't that get yeah. to them? It's weird. Uh, let, me, let me see if there's any uh, fake nipple there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Taliban have missed it. They missed it out. I mean, should they? they I mean, all... I'm surprised they didn't blur that. To be honest, it's true. Yeah, sh shouldn't they put? Um, shouldn't they put burqas on all of them? Because you know, like that's it. There's only one fashion for for women. There's bags, <laughs> <laughs> bags, <or them>. literally <laughs> actual black carrier bags. The, the disrespect. No, they so, do you want me to read it? Yeah. Okay. Let's read. Okay. That. Okay. Um, can you zoom in a little bit for myself and the people? Okay. The Taliban Ministry for the... Pro oh, my God. Do you remember this when they completely changed the name as well? For the propagation of virtue <laughs> and the prevention of vice. This used to be like the Women's Ministry of Affairs or something. Yeah, this is yeah, ridiculous. Right. Now they we're, we're, we're like, we've been dubbed down to vice and virtue and we know there's no virtue in it. It's the propagation and the prevention of vice because that's what we are. Um God, I just hate this. Okay. Um, has been displaying the heads of female mannequins in shops, claiming that it goes against Sharia law. Surprise, surprise. Despite the promises and guarantees that the Taliban offered. Oh, you mean they weren't, they weren't like true to their word? Horace, are you shocked? Particularly women and minorities, the facts since they came to power on August 15th show that this was nothing more than false advertising. A new edict from the Ministry for the Propagation of Virtue and the Prevention of Vice, disgusting, has banned displaying the heads of female mannequins in shops, meaning that shop owners must remove them or just lock a uh, black plastic bag on it and you're fine. This is the Taliban's latest step. I mean, what else could they do? Imagine if they beheaded the mannequins, by the way. I just had a thought. Like, <laughs> I mean, if they just cut the necks off them, it's pretty much the same thing and that's more their style. Um, okay. Uh, this is this the Taliban's Taliban. latest step in their attempt to remove women from all public life and social life. There have recently been protests led by women in the capital, Kabul. Very brave women. The protesters wanted to reclaim their role in society and express their rejection of the new measures implemented by the Taliban regime. The Taliban, sorry, the Taliban decided to open fire against the protesters. Despite their, yeah, we and we saw what they were doing to, yeah. remember even the ones, they, the yeah, woman yeah. they caught in her house? Yeah. Quite a few of those, Just, yeah. yeah. Despite their initial promises, the fundamentalists have been gradually taking more and more rights away from women. Firstly, they decided to replace the Ministry of Women's Affairs, there we go, with the Ministry for the Propagation of Virtue and the Prevention of Vice. The, the Then images of women on advertising posters began to disappear. Remember that? We covered that as well. And they started blacking out the beauty salon ads and stuff as well. Um, have began to disappear and bit by bit women have been losing the rights they fought so hard to obtain. The list of prohibitions for women increased by the day. In addition to the ban on female mannequin heads, a new rules to, oh my God, this was so infuriating. Horace, listen to this. And I, oh sugar, I was going to pull up the hadith to this if you can find it. That would be incredible, but if Which not, one? it's okay. Which one? Um, so the new rule um says that taxi drivers are not allowed to transport women and women traveling more than 70 kilometers unless they are accompanied by a close male relative i know there is a hadith here which talks about women traveling a certain distance without a mehram so this is where they're getting that from um mm. but i completely forgot to pull it up i'm not sure if, if we're going to be able to find what it what were the second. keywords in that what were the keywords in that? uh woman distance mehram i would say something like that and if we could just yeah there you start. go Oh, you yeah, found yeah, it. Awesome. Sweet. Okay, this is what they're basing it on because this is the first thing that came to my mind when I read that. I was like, those cheeky bastards even know this. Of course they yeah. do. Yeah, see? Uh, so this is a Sahih Hadith as well. So it's it's very well graded. It's like widely accepted by everyone. A woman is not to travel the distance of a day and night, which the Taliban deem as 70 kilometers, unless she is accompanied by someone who is a mehram. So this is a law on top of 
everything else currently sanctioned for women. Um, and it's straight from the Islamic source. Like, come on, you can see that link, Harris, right? They're not even making this stuff up. This is not yeah, a new law they've got out of thin air. Jamia Tirmidhi 1170, that's the reference to that. There we go, thank you. In the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, where citizens' public and private spaces are closely regulated, the Taliban government recently ordered television channels to stop broadcasting programs with women. Despite multiple international sanctions, the Taliban regime continues to force its interpretation of Sharia on its citizens. There you go. Okay. Well, I love it how they try to water down that Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, blah, 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 blah. blah. They, uh, the Taliban regime continues to force its interpretation. What do you mean? Its I know, not just the, not just the unanimously the, the, accepted interpretation that is Islam and Sharia is, in the sources. It's written in sad and stone. This is the reason why ever since um, the Saudis became the Saud family became the kings of Arabia. That that was the reason why women were not allowed to travel by themselves. This is the exactly this is the that's the whole idea. reason for the um that these whole system. Lines. Yeah, these two lines were the reason. This so, is why you have guardianship as a system in Saudi Arabia. This is where the concept of a mahram and wali comes from. All of these things, but but you know why uh, on a, on a larger scale, you know why. <laughs> Why they decided to do this? There's a hadith for that as well. Oh, <laughs> come on like then. You, Let's see. Like you, you've heard, you've heard of that, but but there's okay. a hadith for that as well. This is this one. Sahih Muslim 1403a. So Jabir reported Allah's messenger once was walking down the street. <laughs> And so he came to yeah. his wife, Zainab, as she was tanning a leather and had sexual intercourse with her. He then went to his companion. So why, why, why did it happen? Oh, the woman advances and tries in the shape of a devil. So when one of you see a woman, he should come to his wife for that will repel when, what he feels in his heart. So the recommendation to the one who sees a woman and is attracted to her to go to his wife or a slave woman and have sex with her. So there's another one which is a bit more detailed. I think the, the, the one that said the prophet was walking down the street and he saw a hot woman point on that yeah it, it, the one you're referring to when he sees a, a hot woman and he runs back to his wife and he has sex with her it's there's like a couple of hadith before where he's telling men that like looking at a woman is lustful and that's like the yeah. first them committing adultery and the first thing but is your gaze and then listening to like nice sounds of women is is, is, is akin to adultery as well in another sense but for muhammad he can look at whoever he wants and then he can also yeah, get but... whoever he wants <laughs> I think the funny point in that one is that, so was she wearing a burqa or jilbab or whatever their interpretation, whatever these Salafis say, because, uh, or maybe those verses came down later on. So they're talking about Zainab. Zainab was, to the best of my knowledge, I could be wrong, the, the, the jilbab or hijab verses came uh, when Omar saw Sauda, who happened to be Muhammad's second wife, uh, you know, doing her business in the fields. Um, there was a very funny kind of women can't even do that business in peace back in the day. <laughs> your, 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 your video that shows it that, that the poop that changed the world. <laughs> <laughs> All women, though. there's so <laughs> many funny comments under that. People are making such good puns, and people are like, Holy shit! or like that. Oh, <laughs> there was a couple Ray made a funny joke as well. <laughs> Some really good comments. So, so, um so, so I remember, so that came pretty much early on after Muhammad got married to Sauda. So that would have been, what, 12 or 13 years into Muhammad's prophethood claim um, because uh, Khadija died after 10 years or 11 years, something like that. So that would have come in, 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 in the final seven or eight years of his death. So Zainab came a lot la later, this Zainab. That, that Zainab came, I think, uh, way after Sauda. So at that point, maybe... The hijab had been made mandatory for all women. So Muhammad was getting horny by looking at women in burqas? This guy was, yeah, you know, like... Case, he was, and that's really, really sad. This guy was like, maybe, who knows? This maybe turned him on. <laughs> but don't you, don't you just get... <laughs> I know, I, I get in trouble. I want to say something, but I better not. Um, but, uh, but, but I really have a feeling I know what you're going to say. <laughs> No, I'm not going to say. <laughs> no, definitely but, um, don't. If it's what I'm thinking, yeah. please don't. Yeah, okay. but 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 that but that's just uh, you know <laughs> that's the reason why if you just look at anything, 
it just makes you horny to these people. I mean, that's that's just. But I think Prophet Muhammad was just um, because he spent his youth with an older woman, Khadija, um, who ha- who I happen to respect a lot. I think she was a very powerful woman. She, with a colorful man like Prophet Muhammad, she did not let him move. She's like, mm. nah, uh, don't you try that, Prophet. Allah told me to marry that woman and that woman bullshit to me. <laughs> I ain't letting you marry anyone. So, the, you know, she was clever. No, she, she was supporting his lifestyle. So he had to be she, his, under her thumb in that, in a lot of ways. He, yeah, he was. So there you go. She so, definitely, so she let, yeah, don't like to use this expression, but if we're talking about such, what the way he changed the world afterwards in, she wore the pants in that relationship at that time for sure. She did. That's she what, did. that's, that could lend to why he flipped the, the roles so much and gave himself such, uh, unlimited power and any woman as possible because Khadija must have really like he was whipped <laughs> not not literally yeah. maybe he was I don't know <laughs> but yeah <laughs> but, but we see but we see Aisha was uh, quite clever she would make certain comments as well she would object to Muhammad taking Aisha is my girl she knew but but she still wasn't as dominant as Khadija, though. She she could not stop Muhammad. She showed her distaste for Muhammad's liking of other women. Like, for example, she made a comment about Javeria that as soon as she walked in the room, I knew my Muhammad will like my husband would like her, so I did not like her. Uh, mm. she, she made that comment when Javeria, this beautiful Jewish woman, was brought to Muhammad. Um, she also said to Muhammad when Muhammad said, um, "Oh, you know, I." Uh, uh, the, it, women can present themselves to me if they want to marry me, and she said, "Oh, your Lord hastens in hastens in fulfilling your desires." So, desire. so Aisha was clever, but she what she didn't wear the pants though. But Khadija did. Khadija did not allow Muhammad uh, look any other way because, yeah, he probably you know he was uh, she was supporting his lifestyle. If you like these videos and want to support me in my activism, then you can support me on Patreon or PayPal. Stay free, everyone. Thank you.